When most people think about Maine in the Civil War, they think about this specific moment as the 20th Maine defended the end of the Union line on the second day at Gettysburg on Little Round Top. While vital, this is really just an hour-long part of the larger four-year war effort from the Pine Tree State. President Abraham Lincoln did not have to work hard to get support from Maine as after the bombardment of Fort Sumter, Governor Israel Washburn immediately called for 10 regiments of volunteer infantry. In proportion to its population, Maine contributed more men than any other state to the Union. This included 80,000 troops divided between 31 regiments of infantry, three regiments of cavalry, one heavy artillery regiment, and 6,000 sailors also joined the Union Navy. Known for their rugged tenacity, many Maine units made names for themselves during the war. The 7th Maine brought much success to George B. McClellan during the Peninsula Campaign of 1862, and they also fought bravely at the Roulette and Piper Farms at Antietam. The 1st Maine Heavy Artillery suffered the most losses in a single charge during the war as they attacked Petersburg. The highest ranking officer from Maine was Major General Oliver Howard from Leeds. He led brigades at Manassas and Antietam, the 11th Corps at Chancellorsville and Gettysburg, and was promoted to Army Command during the Atlanta Campaign. Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain famously left his job as a professor at Bowdoin College and joined the 20th Maine. He would later become Colonel and lead the forces right here on Little Round Top. Rear Admiral James Alden Jr. of Portland led the USS Brooklyn in the Battle of Mobile Bay. Maine's political leaders included Hannibal Hamlin, who was Abraham Lincoln's vice president during his first term, and U.S. Congressman James Blaine, who played a big role in drafting the 14th Amendment and also became Speaker of the House in 1869. While no land battles happened in Maine, the Battle of Portland Harbor did ensue in June of 1863 as Confederate raiders tried to destroy the town's shipping equipment. On the home front, many of Maine's small towns pitched in. This was led by the Ladies' Union Aid Society in Bethel, and they sent things like pillows, shirts, and dried fruits to the soldiers. So, from a family of proud Mainers, I encourage you the next time that you head up to Maine for your summer vacation, keep in mind the sacrifice that the soldiers, sailors, and civilians from Maine made during the Civil War.